Whoa. Before you even know. Whoa. It's kind of like, uh, it's the future. It's the way the future is going, just feeding tubes. Mm-hmm. And corporations are going to bid on who gets to feed you. Yeah. And then they're going to shove liquid food through that tube and down your throat. Yeah. And then, I don't even want to taste it or chew it. Just get no. it in my belly. Yeah. And then it's automatically going to come out of your bank account. Yeah. That makes sense. That's just going to be the way you eat and live. Now, I I have a different idea of something that they should do. Yeah. I want to see the opposite of a microwave. Something that cools things really quick. Oh. Okay. So like, a freezer doesn't cool Way fast faster. Enough. Way faster than a freezer. Mm. What about like a can of uh, aerosol upside down? What? You take like a compressed air. Yeah. And you hold it upside down. That makes it, ice? Yeah, that's how people, I think you can free, uh, you can cool cans really quickly because you spray it and it just like frosts the can. Really? But. Yeah, I don't know probably... if that's even really quick enough. Like, wouldn't it be great to fill an ice tray and then put in the like macro Oh, really? wave? You call don't know it what macro? I, would, I don't know what I would call it. I guess it. that's a logical place to go. Micro macro. Um, What's the opposite of a wave? Uh, still water. Yeah, so a macro still water, and then <laughs> you put still water in there. Yeah, and then beep beep beep. You know, twenty seconds later, ice cubes. Ice cubes. I feel like we could involve dry ice with this, and that might play a key f- key factor. Or you know, sometimes you 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 make food, and then you need to cool it for whatever reason like yeah. last week i made some food that was going to be part of a salad but this part is warm and cooked so they you know the direction said now let it cool for a while i was like oh man i want to eat it now yeah put in the microwave or the macro still water beep 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 20 seconds later ready to go nice cold salad yeah that'd be perfect and i think you introduce it the same way they brought blu-ray players into the into the mix you make vcr blu-ray players uh, no, sorry, DVD, Blu-ray players. Oh, things that do the both. Yeah, so that way, because you ever microwave something, like soup or coffee or something, and it's too hot? Yeah. Then you just cool put it right back down. Oh, reverse yeah. Reverse that 30 seconds. Yeah. Oh, man. Exactly. I don't know if we have that technology. I don't think we do. But. I want it to exist. Yeah. All you eggheads out there, get on it. Yeah. You if nerds. 50 years from now, I want it to be as, as, uh, as normal as a... A hummingbird in July. So, so <laughs> your lack of emotion. <laughs> what? what the hell, hummingbird in July? Why is that so that common? The most is it normal thing I could think? Of. I don't know if I've ever see, even seen a hummingbird. You're just not looking, man. They're fast. Well, that's true. Have you seen hummingbirds? Yeah, I know where to look. I know how long to look in that place. Like I feel <laughs> like I've seen a lot more hummingbird feeders than hummingbirds. I tell you, they are really fast, though. They'll be there for like a couple of seconds, and then they're gone. They just go... Their heart beats a hundred times. And I don't know in in what time frame. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I I I was about to say a second, but it's like, well, that sounds way too fast. Yeah, that's probably not true. A hundred times a minute makes more sense. Even then, then that's not that that impressive. It's more than once a second. That's not that crazy. I feel like it beats so fast that if you ever caught one, it would have a heart attack because it's already going as fast as it can. It's hard. Or is that just like normal? That's like walking. Yeah. I don't know, man. How did we get the hummingbirds? McDonald's? Mm-hmm. Okay. What happened? Fast next? food. Where were hummingbirds we? Hummingbirds are fast. Uh, it's true. So long story short, <laughs> Michael Keaton's opening a bunch of McDonald's. His wife, Laura Dern, is not supporting him. In anything he ever does, apparently. So every time he goes back home, his wife is like standing not that far from the door going like, are we going to dinner or what? And he's like, ah, honey, I just got home. Yeah, I, I don't want to go to dinner right now. And she's like, oh, we never go to dinner. She All like, she wants to do is go to dinner and not be supportive of him. Yeah, Give was- him a hard time for being out there on the road <laughs> As a working man, he's like, oh, I put this house over our head. She's like, our head? You're never here. Come on, don't, Laura Dern. Yeah, don't take away from the point. Like, you just admitted that, yes, he's right, but now you're taking another jab at him. Yeah. It's like, he put this roof over your head. And it's like, be it with plastic cups or what's this weird thing he, his other oh, thing he was selling? Oh, the Fold-A-Nook. Fold-A-Nooks. He's selling a bunch of stuff. He's a salesman. Yeah. 
Uh, this, is, this is a job. He has to travel the world, or the Americas, or at least the Midwest. I don't know why you're calling the states yeah. the Americas. <laughs> Isn't that another way to refer to the states? The Americas. The Americas is North and South America. <laughs> That's it? There's just two Americas. Latin America? Three Americas? Central America? Maybe there's three Americas? Central America, South America, and North America? <laughs> all right, so he's traveling the states. So I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll conform. Yeah, yes, the uh, but that's his job. And yeah, and you get home, and right, and like his wife is like a like a dog that's been alone for a long time. She needs to poop, probably, and <laughs> wants to go for a walk. Yeah, but just so needy. Yeah, and you know, I said that at first because she seemed ungrateful, and that's a, that's one of the big things for me. Every time there's a an ungrateful wife, when the father's uh, when the husband's been working super hard, and you could tell he's stressed out, and he just needs some support and some love, mm-hmm. and then she's like, you know, you never take me out. All you ever do is work. You're never here. I just, I, I, I hate it. But in this movie, I kind of felt bad for Laura Dern. Especially... Was it because it was Laura Dern? Uh, is she always has a sad face though? She's Not in Jurassic Park. Sad. She's excited by these dinosaurs. She was crying by piles of poop. Yeah, but she always looked kind of sad, didn't she? Pensive, maybe. Mm. I think she's a sad-looking individual. Person, yeah. Um, but in this movie, she became pretty supportive mm-hmm. of him at one point. Yeah. Even though, he, even though she found out the only reason that he took her out for supper is because he wanted to pitch to all of his rich friends, all yeah. of their rich friends. And then when things went sour, he canceled the membership to that club, mm-hmm. and that's the only thing she ever wanted to do was go to that club. That's right. He, she had laid out his clothes for him, and she was in her nice dress, doing her makeup and her hair. And he's like, "Oh, I canceled it. We don't need those friends. Yeah, we'll make new friends." And then he takes her to a bingo night. You know uh, what, supper. though? That bingo night looked like kind of a lot of fun. Yeah, but uh, to us, we're not people who go to to club dinners. You know, club. I suppose. Uh, uh, you know, but even then, cruise. like <clears throat> you know, he lived in a normal house he didn't seem like a go go to the dinner club club person i don't know how he got into that lifestyle how did he get into that club because he looked like a normal guy is that just a thing that people did in the 50s they went out for like a social club dinner i guess the hell is that people still well no i don't know it, maybe his wife had ties with it or something but it just, maybe it didn't seem like he was successful enough no and they all seem kind of like jerks to him yeah and then he, when he canceled it, she's like, those are our friends. It's like, no, they're fucking jerks. Yeah. Why, why is that a thing? Yeah. The, and at some point, I, I felt like he was really hammering at home, and I thought it was for a uh, – to give his wife a hint. Mm-hmm. And I don't think it ever paid off. I don't think it was for the reason I thought, where he was talking about this husband and wife who was working at a McDonald's. Yeah. And it was like, and they're just – they're working as a team. You know, yeah, it's like they're a real team. It's like, yeah, you and know then what Laura I mean? Dern just like goes, All right. Yeah. And, and they go goes, to bed. I thought it was gonna be like, you know, I want to include you more into into yeah. my work and we can spend more time together. Let's do this as a team because I think we may and it just didn't pay off. It didn't go to anything. And I don't know if well, Michael no. Well wait, what's his name? I keep forgetting his name. Uh, Michael Keaton? Uh, Michael Keaton. What's his character name? Ray, <laughs> yeah, was Ray that oblivious that he was saying these things and didn't know that it, it directly, um, like mirrored their situation just in like the because he's he's building all these franchises and meanwhile he's just letting his his marriage fall apart. Yeah, and then he's talking about this one thing that might save his marriage uh-huh. and help his business grow, and he just doesn't make the connection. No, I think he did make the connection. I feel like she. She kind of did make that connection, too, because she started helping out after a while. So, yeah, mm. he says, oh, they're a team. They're a team. Ain't that wonderful? Husband-wife team. It's a great thing. Then he goes off to Minnesota, meets uh, uh, Patrick Wilson and uh, uh, Linda Cardellini. They play a little music together. He's mm. clearly infatuated with Linda Cardellini. And then he goes back home, and his wife is like, oh, I've got some other people to open up a McDonald's franchise. And he's like, nah. So she had joined the team. Oh, yeah. And he's like, nah, now they're coming to me. I don't need to go find people. <laughs> Forget it. And then, like, the next time we see her in the movie, they're eating carrots, and he's like, ah, let's get divorced. 
and she doesn't say anything. She just eats another carrot. Yeah. Or no, she puts her fork down. He eats she, oh, he eats carrot. another carrot. It's it very important. It was the weirdest. I mean, it looked like they had the most uncomfortable relationship yeah. from the whole, entire movie. Yeah. There's no point in that movie where she's like, oh, that's great. I'm happy for you. Or he's like, so what would you do today? Nothing. Yeah. It's it was just... one of those relationships that I would see as a kid and, and be so afraid for my own life. <laughs> I was like, this is what it's going to be like. That's what marriage is. Sitting at a table and just not talking. Just the sound of the fork touching yeah, the plate Just constantly. forks and then like a, a quiet, could you pass the salt? Yeah. And then he kind of does it kind of angrily. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody like clears their throat. Maybe tries to tell a work story. The other person's clearly not into it and it's quiet again. <laughs> so Steve at work. I don't want to hear about Steve at work. <laughs> just causes a fight. That's that's what that's, yeah, it's it's coming. It's all coming. Um. So uh, yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So all all throughout plot. this, all throughout this, Michael Keaton is is trying to make little uh, adjustments to McDonald's. To, you know, seeing if he could save money here or there. Reasonable adjustments. Reasonable One of them is adjustments. Just getting a Coca Cola logo on the bottom of the menu. Yeah, and it's gonna pay for. it. Basically, the good amount. pay for the locations, and he calls the McDonald's brothers because their contract uh, dictates that any changes to the way McDonald's is run basically needs to be approved by them, and they're always like, "Nah, no, nah, I don't want to do that." Nah, <laughs> that, that's that's uh, that's an accurate portrayal of exactly yeah. what he said. Uh, what? And there will always be the other McDonald's brother, like standing in the background, watching him on the phone, going like. Yeah, you tell him no. Yeah. It was such a weird dynamic. They had it such was... an odd dynamic. It was so strange. And it's like, at the at the beginning, because you, you, you want to root for somebody. Mm-hmm. You're not going to root for Laura Dern. No. You're not going to root for uh, the uh, the assistant no. who, uh, who sells off uh, some of these little milkshake machines. Mm-hmm. So you really only have two choices. You have the McDonald brothers and you have Ray. Yeah. And it's like at first you're rooting for Ray because he's struggling and his yeah. brothers just seem like they don't know how to manage a business. They don't know how to expand. That's right. Like they want. That seems to be their dream. Yeah. And they are too quick to give up on it. Way too quick. Yeah. It seems strange because they mentioned like uh, Michael Keaton says franchise it. And they're like, we tried. Didn't work. Some guy in Phoenix or Tallahassee was putting burritos on the menu. Doesn't work. <laughs> it's like get a new uh, manager. Yeah. Get a new manager. How? Like, yeah. it seemed like they were so, so easy to give up on anything. Yeah. It was weird also. So they expanded to, they say in the movie that they expanded to five restaurants and then had to reduce back down to three. We only ever see both of them standing around in the one restaurant. Yeah. They seem to be doing work. They've got clipboards. They're looking. So sometimes doing some cleaning. But, like, they own three restaurants. Why are they always, both of them, in the one yeah. And their their concern is quality control. They never go visit any other restaurant. It's so weird. Yeah, they never step foot. I thought one of the big points was going to be they're driving down. And they see one of them is selling fried chicken. And, yeah, and they'd be and like, they go nuts. No, no, they never leave. Let's take your franchise away or something like that. Yeah. They just go get phone calls. Yeah, from Michael and, Keaton and get hung up on. And him. then yeah, and then he hangs up on them because they're like, no, <laughs> nah, man, no, nah, man. Don't want to do that. No. Yeah. Because, uh, okay, there were a few things that we, we, we skipped over. Because one of the big things was milkshakes. Yes. Uh, Linda Carlini has this great idea. Turns out, not even her idea. She just saw it in a magazine. Um, yeah, well, that's the all. application of the idea really was <laughs> the idea. It was like, great idea. Um, look at this magazine. It's like, okay, so it's not really yours. I could have picked up this magazine. But... Whatever, he's an infatuated with her, so he kind of gives her the credit. Yeah. Uh, these are milkshake packages, dried milk flakes or something. Yeah. And you pour them into cold water, and you mix it for what seemed like 20 seconds, maybe. S- Stir it up. And it turns into a, a nice, thick, delicious milkshake. Yeah. Does this exist in real life? That's true. I kind of would like to, like to check it out. Well, imagine you, like, this seems, I, mean, I would keep them in my pocket. You keep them in your pocket every time you have a glass of water at a restaurant? You're totally right, man. Because I love a milkshake. However, this this like this seemed like a weird chemical milkshake. I wonder if we can go online and get some. Yeah, we'll look into it later. Yeah. But and I love a milkshake. Yeah. 
And oh, you do, you do. And so the whole point, they wanted these milkshakes because they didn't want to freeze anything. That's right. Freezer costs 